Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I'm at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us. Uh, we have 40 in Worcester and 20 in uh, Westboro, right close by. Uh, I do nothing but elder law. The other 59 do other stuff. Um, I do a lot of presentations to seniors because of my work. I do a lot of seminars, and I try to supplement that with this show, Bergeron Briefs, the pur purpose of which is really to introduce you to the people you need to know as a senior or as a person who's working with a senior. And uh, one of those people today, and she's really important to you here in North Bro, is my friend Cindy Cormier. Cindy, thank you very much for coming you're on. You're very welcome. Thanks and for I, having me. And you're, you're not from North Bro, though. So you're from, you're from no, this faraway I place. No, I was born and raised in Hudson. Born and, and raised I'm in Hudson. Still there. Still there, mm -hmm. right? Like a true, a true local. Hudsonite, yes. yes. Yeah. But you're working, you're doing some stuff in North Bro. So this project is called Dementia Friendly Communities. Come and I, to be dementia friendly. Come to be dementia friendly. And I know for the folks who have watched this show, they've learned a little bit about this, because I know I had my friend Carol DiRienzo on right. a few months ago to kind of talk yeah. about I'm this. I'm working with Carol. And, which is, and that's very exciting. So, mm -hmm. so I guess what, what I'd like you to do is just kind of talk a little bit about what the, what the project is, uh -huh. just for background and for people who didn't see that first show. Okay. And then maybe we can talk a little bit about what's happening right now, actually, kind mm -hmm. of as we speak here in Northboro mm -hmm. and in the two other communities where, you, where, where this is working. And, then, and we'll kind of go from there. So tell us a little bit about the project. Well, I'm working with Bay Path Elder Services. Mm -hmm. Bay Path was able to get a and grant. And excuse me, Bay Path Elder Services, it's who in, are they? They are in North, I'm sorry, they are in Marlboro, yeah. and they are in ASAP, which is an Aging Services Access Point. That was going to be a quiz, that's right. Yeah, that's thank right. you. And, um, they and they support 14 communities in this area. And they're a nonprofit. They're right? a nonprofit. So um, you're not work. This isn't a kind of some kind of scam by no, somebody coming in. No, it's in not a scam. Okay. No. Okay. Um, but they are the people that you would go to if you have an aging family member, or friend, whatever. Yeah. And you're looking to find out what services are available. Mm -hmm. They're the point. They're the place that you go to find that out. I see. So they I were see. able to get a grant from the Metro West Health Foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, to bring somebody on part-time mm -hmm. to implement what they're calling dementia-friendly communities. I see. So our program is called Come to Be Dementia Friendly mm -hmm. and it is based on a, um, a model that was developed in Minnesota mm -hmm. and um, those folks they did a lot of work and they actually put a toolkit together that's online actonalzheimer.com Org. So um, in Minnesota, they implemented about 40 communities already. They, they've deemed dementia friendly. Um, communities so, who have kind of gone through this process yes. that we're working on here. Yep. I see. Yep. I see. And so yep. um, yourself and uh, the um, Council on Aging Directors in the three towns that we're working in, which yeah. is Hudson, Marlboro, and Northboro. So Kelly Burke from Northboro. Kelly North Burke, actually she's went the out. Council yeah. on Aging Director in Northboro. She yeah. went with you, and Christine Alessandro, who's the director at Bay Path, mm -hmm. all went out to Minnesota and checked out what they were doing out there and thought, this is something we should do in this area. We also love the fact that we were right next door to Mall of America. So oh, we yeah. all got to see the real Mall of America. Uh -huh. kind of up Big thing. Stage. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. So, um, Bay Path brought me on mm -hmm. to coordinate this effort in these three towns. Mm -hmm. And the intention is to implement it in all 14 towns or cities and towns that Bay Path um, currently supports. So right now we're working, um, it's a four step process. Yeah, tell us about kind of where you got, how you got to where you are right now in Northboro and kind of your sense of how all of that worked. Sure. And, there, and then if you could give people a sense of where it goes from there, that uh -huh. would be good too, because one of the things that is, it is, I think, is really wonderful about this, right, is that it is on a pretty tight timeline. Mm -hmm. It's a process that it's about a yearish. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but it doesn't kind of go forever. So many people no, no. Are, are asked to be involved in things, and uh -huh. like they never end. As a volunteer, you die, right? Whereas <laughs> this has got. And I think a lot of that has to do with you. I think you've been really making the trains run on oh, time. Oh, thank you. So t talk about how you got to where you are. So it's and a four-step process. Yeah. Yeah. And the first process, the first phase of the process yeah. is um, convene, mm -hmm. meaning getting folks together that want to do this. So um, it's a grassroots community level pro process. Mm -hmm. um, they're, the only person that's getting a little bit of money is myself. Everybody yeah. else is on a volunteer basis. Yeah. Um, each one of our 
directors of the senior centers, the Council on Aging directors, were very instrumental in kind of building the teams. Um, mm -hmm. We did a little differently in Hudson versus Marlboro and Northboro, but in Northboro, um, Kelly was great about reaching out to people in town. Uh, I'll call them the movers and shakers in town. Yeah. Um, we yeah. have a fireman on the team. We have a policeman on the team. We have um, a health care. Uh, she's actually a um, nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, people from assisted living facilities. All kinds of folks on the team. A range of, a range of people. Yes, range somebody people. from every walk, of, well, not every walk of life, but yeah. many of the walks of life. Yeah. Um, so we start out with an action team, and that action team is the one that will really drive this through the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, once we had the action team established, we then went out to the community again, um, having a community meeting, inviting everybody and anybody to come to this meeting to yeah. learn about what this program is. Yeah. Um, Lots of folks signed up because yeah. the next phase, which and, we're and in excuse, now. And excuse me, that, sure. that, so that community meeting happened about when? Uh, that community meeting was probably about six weeks to two months ago, so I'd in, say, like in So like in early Bro. June, late May, early yeah, June? Yeah, yeah, Because right we're now in like mid-July, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yep. So we got those folks up to speed as to what we're trying to do, what yeah. we're trying to accomplish. And um, they are now out in the community surveying folks. And, and there are 11 different surveys and the surveys are mm -hmm. all based on the different sectors. So and, there's and, one for local government, there's mm -hmm. one for the hospital, there's one for clinics, there's one for faith communities, you know, all of the churches. Um, one for legal and financial services. One for legal services. and financial services. I know, I'm, I'm doing, I know this Cause going because I'm doing in it Marlboro. in, I'm doing the, some interviews in Marlboro right. with my, some of my fellow lawyers right. and financial people. Yeah. yeah. So there's 11 different surveys yeah. based on who it is you're surveying. And each survey has a maximum of 16 questions. Yeah. Um, and basically they're asking, what do you know about dementia, Alzheimer's and the other forms of dementia? Um, what, what resources do you know about that are out there? And those types of things. Do you come in contact, do you have any knowledge? Um, and so folks and are out doing those surveys now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're expecting that we'll, we'll have at least 100 surveys brought back to us. I see. And, and so are people being asked kind of what they know about dementia but, or, or, or also a, about any of their particular contacts with people who had dementia yes. given the role that they have, given as, as a service provider, whether it's public sector or whatever? Right. Let's just take a church, for example. Yep. Do you yep. have people in your, in your congregation that you think may be suffering with dementia? Um, that type of thing. Do you yeah. have any support programs in your in your congregation in your right. church? Those right. types of questions. Right. Businesses. You know. Do you have you been trained? Do you do the people that work for you know what dementia looks like? And yes. if so, what kind of training did you have? You know. And, and I know from the conversations that we've had and from some of the stories that we've heard, you know, you hear some really sad stories about folks that have have. Have, in, have interacted, and it wasn't good. Wasn't a good it interaction. wasn't good. It, right. can, can you give us just a couple of examples of that? Right. Of, of, well, you know, I think about we're not naming names, but just kind yeah, of talking about some situations. Um, the person that, are, that goes into a restaurant, and they've got that menu, and they, it's too much for them. It's too. Right. Sometimes it's too much for me. Right. And oh, yeah. and you know, to take a person that has some form of dementia, looking at that menu, it's just overwhelming. Right. So, you know, we'd like to see where maybe that restaurant recognizes what that looks like and helps that person and gets down to their level and speaks clearly to them and maybe only gives them a couple of options. Right. Can you mention gets down to their level? What talk When about. I mean get down to their level, I mean actually eyesight level, speaking directly to them. Because this is one of the interesting things that I think we both learned about is this notion that if you have dementia, literally your frame of vision kind of shrinks. Right. So that for the waitress to come up to you and stand up to you and Speak be talking. Speak over you. Right. You don't see them. Right. You don't see them. Right. So you actually have to be kneeling. It's a yeah. fascinating, yeah. that's a fascinating thing. You know, thing. I think about our first responders. You know, mm -hmm. um, some of these folks are frequent flyers because there are a lot of things that happen. And it's possible that a person could be having some type of outburst. Well, we'd want to know, we would want our first responders to understand that this is not something they can control, right. and also how to diffuse the situation. Don't add more fuel to the fire. Right. right. Learning how to, to, to talk to somebody with dementia in short, 
concise sentences, you know, um, keeping it simple yeah. um, really helps to diffuse the situation. And I suppose that's a really interesting example that you that c certainly police are regularly trained to, mm -hmm. to, to be trying to diffuse situations. Right. But it may be that those police do not know those specific characteristics of a person with Alzheimer's and therefore what might set them off. Right. Or alternatively, what, what might really kind of slow them down. So right. they actually have to, to, right. to get some experience. You know, I can that. give you yeah. another example too. I know someone whose dad had dementia and he went to a local diner every morning. Yeah. So they knew him there. And when things started to get bad, he kept trying to pay with his Elks membership card. Yeah. And they were like, no, 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 that's not. And he would get more and more agitated. If those folks were better equipped, knew better what what the signs were right. and how to how to deal with this person, he wouldn't have gotten so wound up each time, you know? And, and Let so, me help you find the right card to give us, yes, you know? Don't yes, just keep saying, no, 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 that's not the right card. Yeah, exactly. I paid with it last week. No, you didn't, you the, know? Yes, so. yes, and I, and I think I remember, remember you even mentioning a, a, an issue in the faith community with a, with a woman who was literally asked, asked not to, to come. not come back to the, to the services. Right because of the fact that she was for quote unquote acting out. Right. Now, and certainly as you had said to me, I remember you know, certainly you understand from the perspective of the congregation, sure. you get that, but the question is can you accommodate? What can we do? Because right. these are old people and God's an important piece of their right. lives. Right, exactly. Of their lives. And, and we've learned that folks that have um, dementia or Alzheimer's, I will say, yeah. um, get into music. They enjoy music. So why can't that be the place that they go for that music? Oh, right. See, I can tell you've been out on the road a lot. Now. You, get, <laughs> you, you know, you kind of start developing a million of those kinds. Right. Of so right. there's a variety of surveys now happening mm -hmm. in a variety of members of the community. And one of the reasons I wanted you to kind of really talk about that was it may very well be that some people who are watching may get asked to to be interviewed. And right. so we want people to feel comfortable that once again, this isn't a scam, this isn't some, you know, for profit that's trying to get in, you know, to right. talk to you, that th th this is really part of a community effort. Right, you know? um, yes, we, we want you to feel comfortable that we're not using your name anywhere. Um, right. By answering these questions, you're not gonna get in trouble because you haven't done something correctly. Right. Right. Um, it really is to help us to understand where is the community? What, what's, yeah. you know, what do we know and what don't we know? And I think we don't know a lot a lot. So, so you're, we're now in the middle of that, and we're in the middle of it in, in Northboro. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me where does it go from here? And, and you know, in terms sure. of what are the remaining steps, right. and from your perspective, kind of what is the timeline for those mm -hmm. steps? So, during July and August, the survey team, we'll call them, um, mm -hmm. are out conducting assessments, surveys, yeah. and of they're folks. real person-to-person -person type person -to -person surveys. Person-to-person surveys. Survey monkey on the no, email. no, no. no. We'd people. really like to sit down with right. you. Um, in some cases. People don't have that time, so we'll lead the survey with you and come back and pick it up. At that same time, we're delivering you with some information so that you can start to understand what dementia friendly is. Um, we're giving you like the 10 signs of Alzheimer's um, and how to communicate with somebody that has Alzheimer's or yep. dementia. Um, so just that alone, I think, is going to help some of these businesses and organizations that we're touching. Um, once the surveys are complete, they're all coming back to us and I'm giving them to somebody at Bay Path, Elder mm -hmm. Services, and they are going to tabulate the results of the surveys. Mm -hmm. um, that will happen in September, October time frame, and then all three of the towns will get their results at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and the action team is the one that will then take those results, look at them, and try to determine what is it that our town needs to do based on these results. So they'll come up with an action plan like and they'll prioritize what those actions <laughs> are because mm -hmm. some might be grand ideas and some might be very simple things that we can do very cheaply yeah. to, to get the ball rolling. So once the action team has figured out where we're headed with, with the re, you know, what actions need to be done, yeah. um, there'll be a community meeting. The community be, will be in, invited to be involved in understanding where we're going. Yeah. Um, getting more folks involved you know hopefully some of the businesses and different organizations will step up and say hey we can do that very this easily for right. you you right. know right um, very practical things right being executed at the local level right maybe it's the <coughs> library that has a, a reference area 
for caregivers like myself. I, I actually am a caregiver to my mother. And, you know, I'm lucky to be involved in this world because I've learned a lot of the tricks and, you know, that kind right. of thing. Right. I can't imagine going in without any knowledge and, and trying to be the caregiver. But anyways... Um, I remember you, you're telling me about that, just the kind of one, of one of those basic pieces of knowledge about working with somebody with... Don't try to have it not be their reality. Don't, if, don't, if, don't. if they say it's Tuesday, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. What does it matter? Right. Don't be asking, what did you have for breakfast this morning? She doesn't remember, right. and it's not important. Or what is my name? She Enter into name, their world you? and enjoy it. Right. You know, don't right. fight it because it just causes you more stress and, and causes the person with the problems right. stress, you know. So, so each, so, so, the, so your Northborough team is going to be doing a public meeting at some point, and when do you think those I'm going to say that that's probably going to be October November -ish. October November yeah. to kind of yeah. talk about what's been learned and encourage other people mm -hmm. and then to try to do here's what we want to do first start rolling it out and start rolling it out yeah yeah so I know that you have even before you got involved in this obviously thought a lot about this because you're dealing with your mother right right so you you and and, and you kind of see firsthand kind of what's missing in the world or right. the ways in which the world doesn't yes. deal well with your uh -huh. mother so in your own personal vision mm -hmm. of a dementia friendly community mm -hmm. what what is it about that community that's different from the community the way it exists right now right um again i think it's really people being knowledgeable and recognizing that somebody's having a problem mm -hmm. um you, you walk into a store a, a person that has dementia walks into a store and wants to buy a t-shirt they walk into the store and there's millions of articles of clothing in that store. Right. Extremely overwhelming. If somebody could recognize that somebody is having an issue and could help them and narrow down those choices, yeah. or maybe the music is blaring, you know, maybe you could take them to a quieter part of the store and, and help them out. Because the and music is so disruptive to a person. Right, with right. You know, the recently music, on yeah. TV there was a, um, a man he runs a, elk, a liquor store, mm -hmm. and a gentleman came in, and this man, because his family member had already gone through this process, he recognized right away that this man was having a problem. And so he talked to him for a while, and he was able to take the man's cell phone, because the man wasn't sure where he lived at that point, took his cell phone and called the first number on there, which ended up having to be his wife. Wife was like, oh my God, he's been missing for three days. And he wow. was from like Rhode Island. So somehow he got on the bus. Yeah. Somehow he got from here to there. Nobody recognizing the fact that this man was having a problem. Right. And right. fortunately, this man at the, at the liquor store, because of his experience with somebody with Alzheimer's, was kind able to recognize that. Be because physically... We all should be able to recognize it. You, we should all be able to, in, in a dementia-friendly community. Right, now right. I, know, I remember another, another, one of the suggestions that I've heard you talk about was this notion of um, through the process in a dementia-friendly community of meeting other folks who are taking care of folks, mm -hmm. ideally finding some caregivers like yourself. Right and doing some training. Can you talk, right. talk about well, that a little bit? I, I think it, I, what I really talked about was sharing responsibilities. Yes. Um, similar to what mothers used to do in the neighborhoods when... When we were growing up. Right. You know, it's like, if you take my crew, <laughs> I'll take yours tomorrow so you can go do some shopping. Right, right. Um, or you get we, several people together with several folks who need care and all of a sudden there's a lot of eyes around so right, you're not worried about it. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've talked about um, memory cafes Memory cafes are a, what that are a way for folks like myself and my mom to get together with other folks in the same boat and help each other, talk about it, you know, just, just giving you some comic relief maybe for a little while. Right. And that's where you would learn, where you would make those connections to possibly share responsibilities because you know? you're because you're meeting some people who are going through a lot of these very same things right so right. You, not only can you be kind of teaching and giving them and you get an opportunity to decide whether you're comfortable with that other caregiver yes. and you know build a relationship and possibly turn it into each other helping each other you know? yes yes yeah. without being kind of forced into it right because right? so a memory cafe you asked me what that was yeah. was um that's maybe a restaurant um 
uh, what's the word I want, um, host that. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's on a, an afternoon or an early evening where they don't typically have a lot of business. So they anyway, have a certain right. section of the restaurant that they can kind of close off, right. invite folks like myself and my mom to this. Um, maybe they have a little music or I don't know, maybe there's some type of craft we're going to do or sure. whatever it is and have a meal, a meal where we don't have to make a lot of decisions about what we're going to eat right. and that and not type too of many thing. choices and we not can do some networking yes not only caregiver to caregiver but person to person as far as the person that has the the dementia right because so you many know? people don't realize that other people know, are going through it <laughs> yeah and it, right and that you and that if you have dementia you like talking with people who have dementia right because like, they're not it's, judging you yeah yeah and they're repeating too right and so it's like you can keep telling the same joke over and over again it stays right. funny you know and, right. and, and and the fact that you have trouble becomes funny well it's and it's also i'm not the only one i right. don't need to be embarrassed about that there's a lot of us out there there's you lot, know there's a lot of like us my mom there. says oh yeah a lot of people have that you know yeah. not quite sure she understands she has it but <laughs> <laughs> she, that's great there's a lot of other people but that there's have a lot it, of folks you know? that have, well i think one, one of the you know as you as you described that i was i was thinking i was mentioning before we started that i've started doing my interviews so i'm one mm -hmm. of the people going out doing interviews right and Every single person that I have talked to so far, these are the lawyers, financial plan, the, mm -hmm. every single one of them had, sat, had somebody literally in their family who has had dementia, yeah. Yeah. right? And so it, it, it's like you don't realize how prevalent it is you know, until you start talking to people, right. perhaps because there is such a stigma. Right. And so everyone is kind of dealing with someone, but no one's kind of like talking about right. it. And if you mention one, it to someone, the immediate eight, reaction is like, oh, that's too bad. Isn't that sad? You know? I think the Alzheimer's, we were saying one in nine folks will, will have some form of dementia. The Alzheimer's Association has actually changed that now to one in eight. Oh, yes, of you know? people like over 65. And I've said this yeah. before, that's what the Alzheimer's Association knows about. They don't know about all those other folks that haven't been diagnosed. Right. That are at right. home that somebody's taking care of. People and, like you and me that are having trouble memory. Right. Right. Now, <laughs> right. right That's true. Right. That's and crazy. as as our generation gets older, the baby boomers, the numbers are just going to continue to grow. That's right. And for both of us, I mean, we, we're sensitive to it because, you know, your mother's going through it. My mother died in a nursing home. Right. My older brother has a diagnosis. Right. And so you, the, the, it's great because the community that you're describing, the dementia-friendly community, is exactly the place where we would want to live as right. we get older. Exactly. You know, a place where we could get a little confused, mm -hmm. get even very confused, mm -hmm. but not be embarrassed to live there. Mm -hmm. Not be embarrassed to leave, to get out of the house and go to the store or go to the restaurant, you right. know, and kind of, and right. live a life, yep. which is, which, yep. so I think what Similar you- Similar to the yeah. uh, Americans Disability Act, you know? In many ways You know, I mean, think about how many folks were not getting out in the past because right. there were, weren't elevators and there weren't ramps and there weren't right. curb cuts. You know, yes. so somebody yes. else was doing their shopping for them. They didn't have the ability to go out and do that. And do it. I remember you know? reading about this one store in in, uh, in uh, England that that the store manager became, was committed to being dementia friendly, and he talked about it in terms of doing mental ramps. He right. said, you know, there used to be, you couldn't go up the, get up the stairs, you couldn't come in the store. Mm -hmm. You know, and then now, then now we have ramps. Right. So maybe people need some mental ramps. They still can go shopping. Mm -hmm. They just need a little help. A little bit of help. They just need a little bit yes. of help. Yeah. Yeah. So Cindy, it's. Obviously, I think it's wonderful what you're doing. I think you've made such a contribution in terms of helping folks do this in a way that is that is kind of really organized and, and kind of moving it on schedule. Mm -hmm. I think that's been a really wonderful thing that you've contributed to this. Thanks. I know it's been a lot of hours. Thanks. Right? It's okay. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just wonderful what you're doing. And, Thanks. And I think, you know, good luck over the next several months. And hopefully... We can have you on and 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 uh, maybe Kelly and Carol DiRienzo. Okay, yes. When you're done, yeah. Like I, in October, I do want to mention. Um, yeah. I have a couple of co-chairs in Ma in Northboro. Yeah. Carol DiRienzo yeah. that you've mentioned before. She's the nurse carpenter, and also who, who lives here in Northboro. Right. right. Yeah. And also um, Jocelyn Earhart. She um, is the outreach coordinator coordinator at the um, Northboro Senior Center. Oh, that's great. So, and she's really active. So between the three of us, we're kind of running the show over there. That's terrific. Um, which is great. Right. Um, and I do want to mention that if anybody has any questions about this at all, they can either call Kelly Burke at the Senior Center mm -hmm. or they can email me. My email address is ccormier, C-C-O-R-M-I-E-R, at yeah. baypath.org. And we're going to try to get that feel on the free, banner yeah, also. Yeah. Uh, feel free to give me, you know, send me an email. Um, I encourage folks, if somebody approaches you about filling out one of these surveys, that they do it. 
it, right. it, it'll take 20 minutes of your time. Like I said, if you need us to leave it with you, that's fine too. Um, but the more information we get, the better the outcome will be. Right. The better the actions will be. Right, because the goal is to have this really be something that is un a, a commute. This is dementia friendly Northbrook. Mm -hmm. This isn't dementia friendly Wayland. This right. isn't dementia friendly Shoot. Right. It's what is unique to Northbrook that can make this each really Each town, happen. each city has different needs, right. and that's what we're trying to identify and take care of. That's true. So, yeah. Cindy, thank you very, very You're much. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope to see you on the next installment of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you. Mm -hmm.